What I thought I'd do is I'd take you through a presentation. This is a fairly new one that I've uh, created. I actually just launched it in Montreal a week and a half ago, and which I hope to ladder into a book. So I'd, I'd love your feedback at the end of it. But it's called Stop Advertising, Start Socializing. And it's all based on what I think is uh, this phenomenal time we're living in. Uh, and it really is about extraordinary opportunities. And I was saying yesterday, and I'll say again today, that I feel so blessed to be in the field of communications and marketing at this point in time. And I would imagine it, be, uh, it, it will be, history will treat it the same way as, you know, uh, uh, the priest that used to sort of communicate the Bible via stained glass windows, all of a sudden having a, uh, you know, having a book, and then the printing press, and how that changed the world, and, or how the car suddenly turned into roads and motels and made cities possible. I really feel we're living that in communications. And I think that that's, th I think the internet's kind of day one. And I think what we're going to see in the next five years is just going to be phenomenal. The times are really changing, though. And the, and the other thing I want to talk about, if we're in the business, or whether you're in the business of selling clients or you're in the business of selling consumers, we've gone from this era of overconsumption, where, where self-actualization wasn't about me being a better person. It was a bigger TV set, another car. Uh, and, and to what I think is going to be the next decade, I'll define myself through underconsumption. And, and you will see, people will go, nice suit, and you go, oh, it's seven years old, I had it refitted. And people will really want to talk about the fact that they're not, their footprint's getting smaller and smaller. And I think one of the reasons we're seeing this massive pendulum switch is that we had the consumer rudderless for a long time. We gave her free money. She lost a sense of what value was. She lost a sense of what purpose was, and it was just about more and more and more. And what happened is, as you look at our marketplace, we've got a credible saturation now of brands and media. And if you were um, uh, in the business of marketing for the last 50 years, uh, you didn't need an MBA. You really didn't need anything more than just a simple five-word strategy, who shouts loudest wins. And if you could outshout your competition with the number of dealerships you had, the number of stores you were distributing in, the number of radio stations you owned, whatever business you ran, if you outshouted your competition, you, you got a proportionate market share because consumers couldn't help but, but listen to your message. But what we see now is, is capitalism took over, became really good at making things, and we're in a marketplace now where there's 3.3 million brands. And this year, there'll be marketers with all shiny eyes launching 30,000 new ones. Well, really, if you walk those store shelves, most of them are meaningless. There's now 40 kinds of Oreo cookies out there. <laughs> and and, and if, you walk, if you look at it, we've created this sea of commoditization. And brand loyalty is in an all-time low. And even if you're doing business with somebody you might have done business with 15 years, they don't care anymore. Procurement has showed up. Loyalty has gone, relationships are disappearing, and new product failure is at an all-time high. And everybody's running a price, the Walmart factor. If I've got to compete, it's got to be the lowest price. Because if I don't have anything relevant to talk about, I better flash a big price point on it. And then media shows up, 1985, 15 television stations. You know, uh, uh, and you fast forward to now, what do we got, 500 TV stations. In the last three years, analog radio stations in North America, we've had another 2,500. 2,500 new magazines, most of them rip-offs of People magazine, pop culture. Uh, add satellite radio to it, add a billion websites. Today, as we speak, 175,000 new blogs will be launched. And the consumer is not spending one more hour with media today than they did in 1985. It's just a completely different thing. They're spending more time in social media, but they're not spending any more time in mass media. And if you give them a chance, they'll filter through any ad if possible. PVR, TiVo, 77% skip most ads. I think it's closer to 90%. Advertising retail, recalls in an all-time low. You happen to be one of the few medias that still has a captive audience, which is radio, because I'm in the car and I'm listening to it. You know, I haven't got my laptop. Well, some people do when they're driving, but not everyone. <laughs> and, and the interesting thing here that we've got to understand is they're running to their media. And they're running to their media because they can connect with people that are like-minded. You could be somebody that's into uh, uh, Australian rugby and go home at 4 o'clock and get onto an Australian rugby site. One in eight people that get married this year in the United States met online. And they predict that to be one in three in the next five years. So it's completely changing our whole psychology of how we are and we meet. And very often, I say to clients, your number one strategy is to go from Facebook to face to face. Get people back socializing in person because you can't sell beer unless they're doing that. You can't sell clothes unless you're doing that. You can't sell movie theaters in case you do it. And the final thing that we had to deal with is we, as marketers is this footprint of what I was talking about earlier of values and values. Over 60% of consumers are now buying beyond immediate gratification. Who are you? What do you stand for? What's your footprint? Are you a sweat factory? How are you manufacturing? Where are you bringing in your product? Tell me more about who you are 
before I decide whether you're going to get my money. So all of this is going along and the marketers' heads are spinning and then what happened the follows their wall as their economy hit a wall. And not only did it hit a wall, it hit a wall and for the first time ever we had a recession with 24-hour media calling the sky's falling, the sky's falling, the sky's falling. Thank God for swine flu because it got people to stop thinking about the economy. Now swine flu is dying back. What's happening? People are starting to talk about the economy again. And what happened though is consumers felt a tangible thing and suddenly woke up and looked at their mutual fund statements or, their, or friends were losing jobs and went, oh my God, my dreams are evaporating. I might have to stay. I thought I was going to retire at Freedom 55. I might be working until I'm 70. And f there was a free fall of confidence. We were doing work with Walmart in the States and Pepsi and, and a phenomenal, probably the highest level strategy work we've ever been part of. Walmart studies this and they said they've never seen consumer confidence switch this quickly. It was like, it went from the world is my oyster to death, and it happened and it felt in hours. It just completely changed their whole psychology. And what happened is that now we're seeing a consumer, and I think a client in the business to business, saying for the first time in a long time, do I really need this? Do I really need this product? And they're shopping with cash and lists. Just go through grocery stores and you're seeing lists come out again. People are budgeting, they're making a sense of what they need. Flyers are coming back, couponing's coming back. So all of this is laddered into the perfect storm for marketers, brand builders, CEOs. And so people say, why am I so excited? Why, why do I wish there was four of me? Why do I wish I was 25 years old? Why, can't, why I can't wait to get to work is because what got us here won't get us there. Shouting loud no longer works. We need a whole new set of rules. And this change is going to be more profound than when the printing press replaced the scribe. This is going to be something that we, we have to deal with. You can have one, I used to say you could be a company that makes things happen, watch and respond to what happened or wonder what happened. Now I believe you're going to make things happen or wonder what happened. The middle ground is disappearing on our watch. Consumers are trading up to iconic brands or trading down to, to what they view to be commodity brands. Beautiful brands, by the way. They go in, the Pantene is now on sale every week. Tide is now on sale every week. So the, the middle ground that we made all our money in as, as marketers and stuff is disappeared. I think every consumer is up for grabs in every category, and I think that sledgehammering your way in won't work anymore. I don't care how big you are. I think that you can't cut your way to growth, and that's all we're seeing right now in the marketplace. Everybody's cutting, 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 cutting. They'll make their profit maybe next quarter, maybe the year, if there's a lot of fat in the system. They'll come out a more productive company, but they're not going to grow purely through cutting. I think the concept of one-size-fits-all advertising, you know, the big pen strategy, global marketplace, we make everything for the world very efficient, is disappearing. Because people are going, I don't want the one size fits all. One way mass media, this is how we consume media for years. And this is why when you're building your social and your online site, this is why when you're building your women's community, it's the interaction and the connection that's becoming so important for advertisers to say, I can throw my idea into your community and it can grow and it can be fostered and it can be cultivated. Concept of same old marketing and media plans. I hear so often clients talking about kids are on the internet. Kids are on battle, everybody's on the internet, and yet they come in with the same media plan. They're not talking about connections. So I think all of the strategies are ben, being rendered obsolete on our watch, and I want to take you through, here's some of the ideas that I think you should be thinking about as you move forward. First of all, it is a brand new world, and we're going to have new rules. We know that. Because I think the world's going to move from stop advertising to start socializing. How do you socialize ideas in your community where you have your radio stations? How do you socialize your ideas uh, in, in uh, women's posts? How do you socialize your ideas in your business? No one cares about brands anymore. And so when I talk about socialization, they're not going to go in there and go, I can't wait to tell you about Bic Pens. I can't wait to tell you about this radio station. What they're going to talk about is themselves and their friends. And they're going to talk about relevancy. How have you helped make their life more relevant? How have you enabled them to do something? So you're, you're in the running shoe business.